Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. The targets are identical to the targets called by ISIS to attack. Uh, so my judgment and my experience is that this uh, was an ISIS-inspired attack, um, and it has been open as a terrorism investigation by the by the FBI. To see four of our military personnel, four U.S. Marines, killed on U.S. soil at one of our training centers, to me is unacceptable. And this fight against ISIS and the terrorists must escalate and we must win. We must prevail and defeat them. Now that we have the name, the key questions are what? Well, first of all, John, I don't, you know, I know that, uh, that what the name sounds like, but we don't know that it's a Muslim name. We know that it's an Arabic name. We don't know what this individual was believing in, and that's what they're going to be trying to determine. Time to clean out this government that we're all dead. Welcome to the show. Shall I repeat my words? Time to clean out this government of Islamic followers or Islamic enablers or we're all dead. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Have a nice Friday. You know, my novel's called Countdown to Mecca. I'm starting to think I should have named it Countdown from the White House or Countdown from Mecca. It comes down to the same exact thing. Now, let's focus on what I just played for you. Shall I do that? Mike McCall, Texas, terrorism investigation. Right after that, we played a CNN expert unsure if the Chattanooga killer, Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz, was a Muslim. Now, who was the CNN expert? Anyone know his name? I do. You know who he is? You know what he did before he became a CNN expert, this putz? He was the assistant director of the FBI under Barack Obama, Tom Fuentes. Not sure if the murderer was a Muslim. That's what passes for intelligence in America? Do you understand that we are all at risk right now because the government has been infiltrated, if not by outright Islamic sympathizers than pacifists who are going to get us all killed. It's only a matter of time. Now, why did the Department of Homeland Security permit this, this, uh, this subhuman, Abdulazad, why did they permit him to go back and forth to the Middle East without stopping him and investigating him? The answer is because Obama has instructed every department in this country not to look at Muslims, no matter what they do. Until the bomb goes off, do not look at Muslims, don't say Muslim, don't say Islam. There is a rule in the government. It's a rule in the military. They have deballed the military. They've decapitated the military. They've decapitated the police. They've decapitated the FBI agents in the field. They've decapitated the DHS uh, agents in the field. And we're all at risk. So I ask you, the American people today, whether you agree with what I'm about to say. Who do you think is most responsible for the killing of these four white Marines. Yes, there's a racial element. That's why Obama hasn't named them. That's why there's been no letters to the families yet. See, they're not illegal aliens. Who is most responsible for this attack on our homeland? Who would you blame the most? I'll tell you who I would suggest. None other than Jay Johnson. I know it's pronounced Jay Johnson. He's the head of the Department of Homeland Security. I could not believe what I was watching the other day. This is the same Jad Johnson. Jad Johnson, who didn't know Catherine Steinle's name in San Francisco. The analogy of a deer in front of headlights would not work. It would be the analogy now of a Johnson in front of the media. Instead of a deer in front of, caught in the headlights, it would be a, a Department of Homeland Security had Jad Johnson caught in front of a media uh, light. So let's look at Jad Johnson and ask why he hasn't been fired today. Let me explain something to you. If you make a catastrophic blunder at work, you get fired the next day. You're fired. Not in Obama's administration. Unless you are a patriot. Unless you err on the side of the American flag. You will not be fired. Who do you blame for this domestic terrorist attack tied to ISIS? Well, there's a lot of blame to go around, FBI, DHS, CIA, you name it. 
Name it. So let's look at the Department of Homeland Security. What do they get their trillions of dollars to do? Who are they looking at? People who are against abortion, people who oppose Planned Parenthood, people who are returning military veterans with crosses and uh, of Caucasian background. They're all suspects. Talk show host, we are the suspects, God! I have to control myself. It's a rock and roll Friday. DHS should be fired. The head of it should be replaced immediately. But we don't have a government. We have a stumble bum drunk named Boehner. He's probably laying on the beach in Jacksonville. Don't even know what happened. That don't mean to happen. What's his name? Boehner? John Boehner? They're probably saying, John, get up. There's been an attack. Huh, what? Huh? I took a long way. Huh? A who? A what? Who had a heart attack? Where? Why would he know that moron? And the gobbler, McConnell, he got the cold deal and no one ever heard of him again. We have no opposition in this country. We have no media in the country. You have CNN experts saying, hey, I don't know if Muhammad Yusuf Abdulazad is Muslim. Let's not rush to judgment. And, and if he is Muslim, you can't smear an entire blissful religion of peace like this. Now, I understand that they're burning Confederate flags everywhere across America, tearing down Civil War uh, statues monuments and the uh, confederate flag is just worse than the nazi flag now to the radical scum liberals they say the confederate flag stands for vile things and they say it inspires acts of terror well where do you think these muslims are getting their inspiration from to commit their vile acts of terror the confederate flag they're getting it from somewhere where are they getting their ideology from that leads them to believe by killing innocent men, women, and children here or elsewhere or shooting people in cold blood because they're all cowards through and through? Every last one of them is a punk, filthy coward. Every one of them. Sneaks. Worse than the Japanese at Pearl Harbor. Sneaks. Where do they get their ideology from that it's okay to kill men, women, and children and blow them up? You think it comes out of thin air? Do you think that they're deranged? Think about where their ideology comes from. Now, the Department of Homeland Security is the problem. It's not the solution. This guy traveled back and forth to the Middle East. He should have been uh, flagged and stopped and investigated. But they didn't do it because he was a Muslim. And they've been told by our Muslim president, or I mean Christian president, remember when he said, You're a, I'm a Muslim, and... Uh, the Neanderthal on ABC News, whatever his name was, I, uh, Staphylococcus said, no, Christian. Do you remember that slip of tongue? During an interview, Obama said, M I'm a Muslim, and uh, whatever his name is, the pretty boy on ABC, I forget his name, the guy who looks like he should be on Dancing with the Stars, Staphylococcus, I don't remember his name, George, George Staphylococcus, said, no, no, he said, uh, Christian. Oh, yeah, yeah, Christian, I'm a Christian, yeah, 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 yeah. So I started to think last night, I had like a paranoid attack. I said, wait a minute, how many other leaders in our government are Muslim, secretly Muslim? We know they're all sympathetic to Islam. Are they actually practicing Muslims? I don't know. This is a big question. There have been uh, allegations that the head of one of the intelligence agencies converted to Islam a while ago and he hides it. Along the line of the TV show Homeland Secure, uh, Homeland. How many other heads of federal agencies are Muslims? Now, that's an interesting question because even if they are Muslims, they're not the type of Muslims who want to prevent terrorism. Uh, of the type, let's say, of Muslim who run Jordan. They're not on the side of Jordan. See, they're not the Muslims who want to fight ISIS, are they? We have stealth Muslims in our government who don't want to fight ISIS. They don't want us to link up with Jordan and Egypt to defeat ISIS, do they? So what side are they on? Why, they're on the Shia side. Aha. Uh -huh. So there are many Shiites in the government, aren't there? Now, remember what I wrote in 2005 in Liberalism as a Mental Disorder when George Bush invaded Iraq. Now, remember what Iraq was. It was 24 million Shia under the thumb of a Sunni leadership, Saddam Hussein, a certifiable evil madman but he kept them under control with terror 24 million was subjugated to him and I said although he is pure evil he may be our counterbalance against Iran's growing force in the Middle East 
And I said, this could be the greatest blunder in military history, what George Bush is doing in invading Iraq. I wrote it. I'm not making it up retroactively to show how smart I am. I wrote it in my book in 2005. You know, it's in print. It's set in stone. You could say what you want about me, but I tell you one thing. You can't alter facts. I wrote it in 2005 in my best-selling book, Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. I said, this could turn out to be the greatest military mistake in history. And it was. And I said, the big winner will be Iran. Iran will now dominate the entire Middle East. That was George Bush. Then we wake up to Obama. And here we are again. And I go to my book, Countdown to Mecca, because if you think what was going through now is bad, you're right, but it's only just begun. And I want you to think about ISIS's strategy in these so-called lone wolf attacks. Think about it. One piece of human garbage, this Abdulazad, whatever his name is, kills four beautiful American men. That's one to four, a ratio of one to four. Now, what if a 1,000 of them go off a year? That's 4,000 dead. And what if a 1,000 of these lone wolves who've been led into the country by Obama and Bush, by the way, kill 10 each? That's 10,000 dead American soldiers right on our shores. That's like defeating an entire brigade in combat, isn't it? That's a very, very low-cost analysis for the enemy, isn't it? Attack soldiers who are unarmed in America, what could be better? What could be better than to be led into a country that's so dumb, run by such morons that they disarm troops on military bases? And speaking of that, on yesterday's show here on the Savage Nation, I told you who disarmed the troops. It was Bill Clinton in 1993. Shortly after taking office, one of his first acts was to take away weapons from troops on bases. I'm glad to see that Donald Trump's handlers are listening to my show and feeding him my show in sound bites which he then repeats on other shows, uh, but not on my show. It's the same as every other candidate in history. Every last one of these flaming so-called conservatives come on this show, and I can name four of them, and the minute they get a claim, they won't come on the show again. They get the same exact controllers and handlers that run Hillary Clinton's campaign or uh, Jeb Bush's campaign. They say, don't go on that savage show. Don't go on that savage show. He's too extreme for you. So don't expect to be hearing Donald Trump again on the Savage Nation. Just expect to be hearing Michael Savage's words coming out of Donald Trump's mouth within 15 minutes as one of his minions listens to this show, which goes off at 3 o'clock on the East Coast, 12 o'clock on the West Coast. All aboard, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Hey, Mike. Uh, we don't know yet all the details. We know that... Uh, what appears to be a lone gunman carried out these attacks. Uh, we've identified a name. And at this point, a full investigation is taking place. The FBI will be in the lead, uh, working closely with local law enforcement. Now that we have the name, the key questions are what? Well, first of all, John, I, don't, you know, I know that uh, th what the name sounds like, but we don't know that it's a Muslim name. We know that it's an Arabic name. We don't know what this individual was believing in, and that's what they're going to be trying to determine. They're trying to cover it up from the get-go. So the problem is the government. The government killed these men. Your government killed these four Marines. One, when Bill Clinton disarmed all military on bases, and two, when Obama told every intelligence agency to look the other way. Look the other way. If you hear a Muslim name, don't you dare look at them in any manner other than in a positive manner, or you'll lose your job. Basically, that's what it says. Now, again, we got to focus on individuals. Jed Johnson, head of DHS, failed us. I believe we've been infiltrated by pacifist Wall Street lawyers like him. If you look at Jay Johnson's background, and I'm sure he's a fine man from a great family, Morehouse College BA, Columbia Law JD, grandson of sociologist and Fisk University president Charles Johnson, comes from a distinguished family. His name, Jay is pronounced J. It's taken from a Liberian chief. Nothing wrong with that. He was born in New York City, the son of Norma Edlin, who worked for Planned Parenthood. That's interesting. The mother worked for Planned Parenthood. In the same week, we're, we're talking about embryos and body parts. So this tells you he's a lifer as a, as a lib. 
And the law firm he came from is the most important part. Paul Weiss in the mid-80s. If you look up the firm, Paul Weiss, you'll see it's one of the most powerful Wall Street law firms. 1999, Paul Weiss goes back to 01 after working in the Clinton administration. Makes a partner in the firm in 94. He goes back to Paul Weiss, back and forth from the government to Wall Street. Active trial lawyer, large commercial cases, Paul Weiss in 01. Back and forth, Wall Street to Democrat administrations. Activist in Democrat Party politics. Fundraiser, Democrat. Special counsel to John Kerry's 04 presidential campaign. Early supporter of Obama's presidential campaign. Nominated by Obama as the fourth U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security 2013. Confirmed December 2013. Confirmed by the U.S. Uh, Senate. The genius is at 78 to 16. And listen to what they said. This is the important, the important part. The Washington Post reported, quote, Johnson, an African-American, would bring further racial diversity to Obama's cabinet. Well, how's that diversity thing working out for us? So you see, the important thing is not whether they stop terrorism. This is the, this is the thing you don't understand about the way the world is now the new, uh, uh, the new Barack order. The new B.O., the NBO, the new, the new BO, the new Barack order, doesn't matter whether they prevent terrorism. What matters is that it looks good and that he has racial diversity. That's all that matters. That's all that matters is that diversity is, is imposed on everyone. 09, General Counsel, Department of Defense. So for years now, this man, this pacifist, has been working like a behind-the-scenes underminer. He was in the DOD in 09. Are you listening? So what was that? Those are the rules of engagement that cost many of our Marines their lives. And now he's the Department of Homeland Security, this lifer from Wall Street. Not one word. Not one word from him. Now, if I read more about his speeches against war, your hair will stand up. And now you'll come to understand the rest of the story as to how this Muslim terrorist killed four white Marines. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. We are doing an autopsy of the murders of the four young Marines in Chattanooga yesterday by a Muslim fanatic. Led into this country, God knows, with the family, the sisters of Palestinian activists that came out today. Oh, I'm shocked. Really? A Jew-hating family? How's that even possible? Isn't it the religion of peace that wants to get along with everybody? Oh, yeah, the sister, take a look at the family. Take a look what's going on. Take a look what's going on in this country and who's running things. So we're focusing on who's responsible for their deaths. In other words, someone's responsible for this attack. Well, there's Bill Clinton who disarmed the military on our basis, 1993. Then there's the Department of Homeland Security that completely failed us once again. They failed us in Boston with the Tsarnoff brothers. That's for sure we know that. Now they failed us here. So what are they doing? What's the, tell me what the responsibility really is. What are they doing? Don't you remember DHS was created after 9-11 in order to augment the FBI and to focus entirely on acts of terrorism on our soil? Well, they failed us from the day they were created. Why? Not because there aren't brave men and women inside DHS. It's because the leadership has failed us. So who is Jad Johnson? You're not going to believe what I'm about to read to you. He gave a speech in 2011 to the New York City Bar Association. And then he gave another speech at the Heritage Foundation in October 2011. And this is the one you must pay attention to. Jed Johnson is driving all of the policy on Muslim terrorism, as far as I can tell. He is the architect and the intellectual genius that Obama is relying upon for how to, how to respond to the Muslim attacks in America and around the world. And you listen to the speech and you'll decide for yourself. Johnson's tenure, this is the head of the Homeland Security Department, pay attention. Don't tune out like a, like a goldfish in a tank, because it's too hard for you. Johnson's tenure as general counsel was notable for several high-profile speeches he gave on national security. Are you listening? In a speech he delivered at the Heritage Foundation, October 2011, 
Jad Johnson warned against, quote, over-militarizing the U.S. government's approach to counterterrorism. He said this, there is a risk in permitting and expecting the U.S. military to extend its powerful reach into areas traditionally reserved for civilian law enforcement in this country. Close quote. He then said in a speech at Yale Law in February 2012, as a student of history, I believe that those who govern today must ask ourselves how we will be judged 10, 20, or 50 years from now. Our applications of law must stand the test of time because over the passage of time, what we find tolerable today may be condemned in the permanent pages of history tomorrow. Classic left-wing wobbly approach. Here comes the killer. Finally, at the Oxford Union, November 2012, Department of Homeland Security Chief, Oxford Union, you know who they are, don't you? Far left British debating society. Oxford Union filled with a bunch of, uh, let me use a word that's acceptable now, uh, I come on, uh, uh, pacifist, leftist, soft shoe dancers. Johnson delivered a widely noted address entitled, quote, The Conflict Against Al-Qaeda and Its Affiliates, How Will It End? And he predicted a tipping point at which the U.S. government's efforts against Al-Qaeda should no longer be considered an armed conflict, but a more traditional law enforcement effort against individual terrorists, Johnson stated. So in other words, now you know why Obama is taking these positions. Because Jay Johnson advised them. Jay Johnson is a Wall Street lawyer, a lifetime leftist. He speaks more like a Quaker than anything I've ever seen. And he went on, Jay Johnson, at the Oxford Union speech to other leftists. War must be regarded as a finite, extraordinary, and unnatural state of affairs. War permits one man, listen to this, if he is a privileged belligerent, sounds like white privilege, doesn't it? You'll hear that now, privileged belligerent, meaning if you're in America with a great military, you're privileged belligerent. Do you understand how twisted these people are? Do you have any idea how mentally disordered they really are? How sick they are? How sick they are? They have nice clean shirts, nice clean suits. They can smile. They can walk. They can talk. They are zombies, left-wing fanatics, and they're getting us killed. Did you hear what I just said? If you're a privileged belligerent and you act at war to kill another, he said war violates the natural order of things in which children bury their parents, in war, parents bury their children. And then he said, in its 12th year, we must not accept the current conflict and all that it entails as the new normal. Peace must be regarded as the norm toward which the human race continually strives. That sounds very good, Mr. Johnson. But four white Marines are dead because of your stupid, idiotic doxies. You're, you're linked into doxies that are antiquated. They belong in a textbook, not on the real world, in the real world. Robert Gates, Secretary of Defense, that's another laughing stock. Robert Gates, remember him? The one who said, uh, don't ask, don't tell is antiquated. Now it's trannies in the military. Remember that? Trannies in the turret. From don't ask, don't tell to trannies in the turret in one administration. Robert Gates, Secretary of Defense under Presidents Bush and Obama said that Johnson proved to be the finest lawyer I ever worked with in government. A straightforward, plain speaking man of great integrity with common sense to burn and a good sense of humor, and that he trusted and respected him like no other lawyer I had ever worked with. I emphasize the word lawyer. Lawyer, lawyer, not warrior. The person who should head DHS as a military combat veteran with one leg. Bring back someone who had a leg blown off by the practitioners of the religion of pieces, and then you'll have a Department of Homeland Security that breaks heads and finds them before they kill again. Countdown to Mecca was my novel. What did I predict? Many of you read it. I should rename it Countdown from Mecca because I think they're counting us down to the big one. My guess is that the big one is in the planning. My guess is, is that if they caught a Muslim bringing an atomic bomb into the United States, a dirty bomb or a clean bomb, they would look the other way and say, this is not happening. I see no evil, I hear no evil, I smell no evil. Because they are not wearing a cross, they are not returning military veterans, they're not a member of a militia, they're not practicing at a shooting range, therefore they cannot be bad. The government that has everything upside down, we are all at risk. You should be very scared indeed. 
they could set off the big one. And guess what? They'd be studying why it was done, what we did to deserve it. How can we stop it? Is there anything we can do to prevent it from happening again? And the president is now on a golf trip in uh, Zambia while we sort out the pieces. So I've just read you a little background of the head of Homeland Security. I believe he is at fault. I believe he is too pacifist to have ever had the job. He is a Wall Street lawyer, a Democrat operative. He never should have been appointed to this position. And it's time for him to resign and we'll go back to Wall Street where he can make a lot of money and leave us alone so we can protect ourselves. Terrorism is eyed in the Chattanooga kill. No kidding. Mohammed Yusuf Abdulazad, the terrorism expert on CNN, didn't know if he was a Muslim. Did you hear this? Went to the Middle East back and forth and DHS didn't, nothing uh, ticked off. If you fly to Florida, you're on a, on, a, on, a, on a watch list. CNN said he's good looking and popular like Sarnov. You hear this? This is what passes for the news. Oh, incidentally, immigration to swell U.S. Muslim population to 6.2 million. This spike of Muslims coming into America is a smart move when you think about it. Well, it's very smart if you're Barack Obama and you have sympathies in this direction. This is what you do. You don't bring in Christians from Syria. You let them to rot. You let them to rot in Syria so they have to go to Jordan. No, you bring in Muslims from Syria. That way you break up the hegemony of the white Christian male. Now, on a personal note, I'm going to switch gears for one moment. You can call on this horrible, horrible murder set of murders if you want. I don't know what you're going to say that I haven't said because what I just told you has not been heard on radio yet. Nobody on radio dares do the work I do. And I did it because I am terrified that something far worse is going to happen as a result of the failures of the Quakers who are running our uh, intelligence uh, units. Now, I happen to like Quakers the few I've met, but their policies are disastrous with regard to self-defense. The Quakers' policies are now being enacted by Obama domestically, except against Republicans and the population itself. Obama is a, a lifetime pacifist, except when it comes to his domestic enemies. He has more hatred for you, if you're a member of the Tea Party, than he does for Al-Qaeda. He has more resources focused on you as a member of a Tea Party than he does on ISIS. Now, here's something personal. I got this 30 minutes before the show, July 17th, 2015. It came from the United States, States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit Court. It's extremely personal. I'm going to go to my website. Not on my site yet. Great. Good work, guys. Thank you for really doing the job I need done. See, I need a new webmaster. I need someone to work with me when I need it done. So it's not up there, but five years ago, Five years ago, my contract was up with my former syndicator. I received a much better offer from another syndicator. They said I didn't. They said they matched the offer, which they never did. And we went to court. We went to arbitration. Then I won an arbitration after two years and almost a million dollars. I don't know what it cost. And then I won. And then the opposition, who has a history of doing such things, uh, appealed it to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals which took another two years, more money, hang up in court, show you what the courts are like. I'm sorry, went from there to a federal court, and a federal district court judge appointed by Barack Obama reviewed the arbitration case. A female Hispanic, by the way, appointed by Obama, you would think she would rule against me. She was extremely fair, she was extremely rational, and she basically was appalled at the appeal of the arbitration award. But that wasn't the end of the road for me. No, this wonderful syndicator that was uh, keeping me in a prison cell of sorts for so many years with legal threats that you could never have survived. If you weren't as strong as me, you would have cracked years ago. Nobody knows what I lived through. Unfortunately for the opposition, I'm tougher than they think. And so I fought them. So I won an arbitration after, I don't know, two years. Then they appealed it to a, a district court. They figured that they'd nail me to a cross because the judge, as I said, was a female Hispanic lady. They tried to use the race card against me. She was appalled at the smear tactics in the court, so far as I can tell. She threw uh, the, basically said, get out of here, in more words than one. They then appealed it to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals because that's how the system's rigged. See, the system in America is so rigged for lawyers and law legal fees that people, even if you beat them fair and square, they keep appealing and you never ever see justice. 
Fortunately, I'm made of stronger stuff than that, so I fought them in the Ninth Circuit. And I just won an hour ago. I beat them an hour ago. Appeal from the United States District Court for the Northern District of California, Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers, District Judge presiding. And I won. They appealed the District Court's confirmation of the arbitration panel's award in my favor. And you can read the findings of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit on my website. It's actually posted on the Ninth Circuit's website now. It's public. It's a public document. And you will see the whole story in, in a few pages. But has there been justice? The only justice is, is that I was free to pursue my livelihood. And I went to work in a partnership with Cumulus Media a few years ago. And that's why I'm still on the radio. But I have not seen one dime of the money that was withheld from me by the uh, talk radio network. Not one cent that they withheld illegally has been paid to me. None of my recordings going back to the year 2000, my archives for my library have been turned over to me as called for in the arbitration. And I am going to pursue this case to the end of the earth. I never quit. There's one thing all of my enemies should know. I never ever quit. If I think I'm right, I will fight you to the end of the earth and you'll never beat me no matter what it costs me, no matter how many years. And I was up way back during the arbitration. I feared so many nights I laid awake fearing for my family because of the money it was costing me. I thought that it would be ruinous to us, but I wouldn't give in because I have an extremely powerful bond with my family that kept me going in the middle of the night. I have an extremely powerful bond with God and I have an extremely powerful bond with the truth. And all I can say is this, as slow as the court system has been for me, justice has prevailed. See, that's the thing to remember. It's taken five years. I want you to understand how long this has taken out of my life. Five years out of my life, and this was on the heels of being banned in Britain, which cost me $400,000, and I didn't get an ounce of satisfaction from the criminal lawyers that I hired in England. They lied to me. They ripped me off. They said they can get the case, this and that. That was two years from 09, then, then this now. I've been in litigation now for seven straight years, and I'm not dead yet. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Have I been weakened by it? No, I've been strengthened by it. I've been cauterized by it. I'm not weaker. I'm stronger because they say that which does not kill you makes you stronger. If you want to read the case, it'll be up on michaelsavage.com. Eventually, uh, uh, right now, you can go to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals if you're in the legal profession and read all about it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. America is reeling from the deaths of these four young Marines killed on our homeland because of a breakdown in the intelligence apparatus in America under Barack Obama, who was looking the other way, refusing to acknowledge anything negative about Islam, anything about ne negative about uh, those waiting to harm us on our shores. And we're talking about that. The media is complicit by saying we don't even know if he's a Muslim yesterday on CNN. And that guy Fuentes is the former... Assistant Director of the FBI to show you how twisted they all are. Now, latest survey shows that 52% or more of Americans now fear radical Islam. It's finally, they're waking up, even the dummies. My, I'm going to tell you something right now. My best book in history is coming out in October. It's already starting to sell like crazy. Government Zero. Go to Amazon. Government Zero. Listen to my subtitle. The Inside Story of the Progressive Slash Islamic Takeover. From best-selling author of Stop the Coming Civil War and Countdown to Mecca, Michael Savage reveals and sounds the alarm about how progressives and radical Islamists are working towards similar ends to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. These two dark forces are transforming a once free republic into a socialist third world dictatorship ruled by government zero. Read about it. Order it. It's the last book you're going to get from me and the only book you're going to need. Government Zero, Amazon now.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. This matter continues to be investigated as an act of terrorism by the FBI's Knoxville Joint Terrorism Task Force, along with the Chattanooga Police Department and our other federal, state, and local partners. Because the investigation is still in its early stages, it would be premature to speculate on exactly why the shooter did what he did. However, we are conducting a thorough investigation to to determine whether this person acted alone. You idiot, you. You want to be a mall cop. That's an FBI director. You hear this? You want to work in a mall with a a can of mace in his hand. What kind of nation am I living in? Pacifist pansies everywhere. Right in front of their eyes. Muslim terrorism based on the Quran, based on ISIS's ideology, and this moron's investigating it. We are in such danger because, see, a fish rots from the head down. Obama's head is rotten from the head down. His brain has been cooked to the extent that we cannot protect ourselves. Or let's put it this way. We can protect ourselves, but the question is how do we protect ourselves from this government? That really is the question. We know what they're doing here. We know what they want to do. We know why these things happen. We know why the Tsarnoff brothers were not investigated, even though they were uh, being monitored. We know why. I read you the biography of Jay Johnson, the head of DHS in the last hour. You can read it for yourself on Wikipedia, and you'll see all over it a pacifist who has bent over backwards to accommodate, basically accommodate those who want to destroy us with his philosophy. Not because he's a bad man, not because he wants them to win, but because his philosophy is so warped, they are winning. Four men are dead because they were disarmed by Bill Clinton, that's Hillary Clinton's husband, in case you don't know there's a relationship. So the policies of Bill Clinton disarmed American troops on our bases, and now his wife wants to be president again. God knows what she'll do to the military next, what's left of the military after this Muslim sympathizing regime is out of office if they ever leave office. And again, I have to refer to something else. A new study came out, finally, I don't know what poll, who knows, poll here, poll there. Finally, majority of Americans are are worried about Muslim terrorism. Pew, spike in Americans very concerned about domestic Islamic extremism. That's the Pew poll, which is as stinking as it gets. That's why it's called the Pew poll. It's as far left as you can go. And even they say there's a huge spike in Americans, quote, very concerned about domestic Islamic extremism. Wow. No kidding. Even before the killing of former Marines, Chattanooga, Tennessee, in an act of terrorism, Americans revealed a deep concern about Islamic extremism, a very high worry about ISIS, according to the latest poll by, by, by Pew Research. Well, you know, Pew Research stinks. It's as far left as it gets. Even they're admitting that most Americans who have a brain, except Bill Maher, let's say, and uh, the, one, the other one on television, are concerned about Muslim terrorism. Excuse me, Islamic extremism. Pardon me. I have to refer to the fact that yours truly has been trying to ring the bell on this for 10 years in all of my books. And those of you who follow me and see that I see things as they are uh, and know that I uh, am like Lynchaeus, the pilot seer of the Argonauts, for those of you who are into fiction, and I ride the highest mast on the seas and can see farther than anyone in the media, I'm warning you that what you see happening now is just the tip of the iceberg of what is liable to happen before this man is either removed from office or leaves office. He is a madman. He is like the pilot inside that German airliner. He has locked himself in the cabin. He is surrounded by his philosophy, which is his doxies, which are his doxies. People are pounding on the cabin door saying, Mr. President, you're driving us into a mountain. The plane's going to crash. And his ears have earbuds in them. He's listening to music. His mind is elsewhere. My last 
book is going to be called Government Zero, my last big nonfiction book. It's coming out in October. I wish it were out now because the subtitle says it all. Government Zero, the inside story of the progressive Islamic takeover. It's on Amazon. I didn't even know it was up yet. But I feel I have to ring the alarm on my subtitle. Listen to my subtitle. The inside story of the progressive slash Islamic takeover. From best-selling author of Stop the Coming Civil War, Michael Savage reveals the massive dangers currently leading to the demise of our government. Michael Savage has been warning Americans for decades. In Government Zero, Savage sounds the alarm about how, how progressives and radical Islamists are working towards similar ends. Pay attention now, all you good liberals, to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. These two dark forces are transforming our once free republic into a socialist third world dictatorship ruled by government zero, absolute government and zero representation. Combining in-depth analysis with biting commentary, Michael Savage cuts through mainstream media propaganda to reveal an all-out attack on our borders, language, and culture by progressive and Islamist travelers who have hijacked public policy from national defense to immigration to public education. There's only one thing that can stop this terrifying agenda. Michael Savage has a plan. Get the inside story before it's too late. If you want to go to Amazon, order your copy now. My suspicion is it'll be sold out before it's released. And I'll tell you something else. Just as stop... Just as Countdown to Mecca, although it beat three other books, was not listed by the progressives at the New York Times on the bestseller list, what they did to Ted Cruz, but he finally got them to list his book. They did not list my book, Countdown to Mecca, even though I beat three major fiction writers. They wouldn't list the book in the top 15. There is a war against the truth. There is a war against conservatives. There is a war against our survival. And I am the true Paul Revere of our time. Not a character in a children's cartoon book, but I, Michael Savage, am the actual Paul Revere of our time. And if you remember, those of you who know me going back to the year 1994, before it was ripped off by a certain talk show host who turned it into a comic book, Michael Savage ran the Paul Revere Society for many years. Do you remember it? You remember the events that we had at the Concord Airport Hilton, the Airport Concord Hilton, the Marin's uh, uh, Veterans Memorial Auditorium? Remember the try and fry him, all of the great events where 2,000 people came, like-minded conservatives? The audience was awesome. This was before the Tea Party. I am the modern-day Paul Revere. And instead of screaming, the British are coming, the British are coming, the British are coming, I'll let you substitute the British for something else because they're already here, they're near, they're everywhere, and they're running your government, and they're not protecting you. Now let's take some callers on the Savage Nation. Line number one, WMAL in Washington, D.C. Go ahead, please. Ditto to everything you said, Dr. Savage. I guess I, the only thing I'd like to add is I think we need to find a way to stop our president from having the, uh, uh, getting the UN, the UN Security Council uh, from approving this, this crazy uh, non-protectionist uh, nuclear deal with Iran so that our Congress actually does have a say in this because that's what he's trying to do now. Yes, but Congress already lost the battle a few weeks before this when Obama cleverly outmaneuvered them and gave himself almost uh, authoritarian powers over the deal with Iran. They have a very short window to oppose it, and they're going on vacation in, a, in about 10 days. You know that, don't you? Jesus. They're going on vacation. Boehner already has the suntan lotion and the case of booze awaiting for him in Jacksonville with his condo, the retirement uh, package, in my estimation. The gobbler's going to the chicken farm. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know what happened in my lifetime. I know how it happened. I've seen it happening. I've, I've watched it, the, the country come down like the Twin Towers. I have watched the country collapse like the Twin Towers in front of my eyes. The entire edifice is collapsing in front of our eyes. Here you have four young white men killed by a Muslim extremist, and the media has the nerve to play a clip from this moron, Fuentes, who used to run the FBI assistant director, who says, we don't know if he's a Muslim. Did you hear that soundbite? It's sad. Yes, I did. It's Fuentes sad. ran the FBI assistant director. He yesterday went on scene and says, we don't know if he's a Muslim. They're bending over backwards to disassociate any acts of violence or terror from this one religion, while they're quick to rush to judgment against any Christian who might commit an act of terror. Have you noticed that little change? 
What a tangled web they weave. What a tangled web it is. What a tangled web it is. This is why yours truly, the Paul Revere of our time, calls it government zero. The inside story of the progressive Islamic takeover. What you have not yet been able to put together, which I've done for you, in my final opus, is show you how the leftist, the leftists called progressives, the communists, socialists, are working hand in glove with the Islamists to destroy America. Do you understand that? WABC, Mike, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Thank you. Uh, I just want to say that the emotion, the lack of emotion uh, that the president showed with the death of four Marines, uh, it was like he was reading the ingredients of a cereal box. And you contrast Well, that's because he's not, they were not Freddie Gray. They weren't criminals in the back of a police van known for felonies. See, he, had, he has sympathy for only a certain um, segment of the population, segments of the population. Great sympathy, for example, for illegal alien children coming across the border with illnesses. Those are people he has sympathy for. He's felons in the back of police vans. Felons who try to steal the guns from police and shoot police. Then he gets emotional, doesn't he? He emotes quite well. Gets all worked up. Why is that? Why was, it, why was there no emotion? Or it, I would love to see anger. I mean, if any normal person would be angry at the murder of four, and you can't even say Islamist terrorists. No, we know why. Take a look at the pictures of the four young Marines who were killed. That'll answer your question. If Obama had a son, none of them would look like them. Does that answer your question? He can't relate to them. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm too late in life and too late in the show, in the sh history of this country, to mince words anymore. If Obama had a son, none of them would have looked like the Marines who were killed. Does that answer your question? I guess it does because you haven't said yes or no. Okay, that's it. There are many other topics. If you care to comment on any of them, my victory in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals must appeal to someone out there. We can touch on that. We can touch on all the other stories of the day. It's Rock and Roll Friday. Let's lighten it up a bit. Let's, uh, let's give the audience something to, uh, to laugh at. <laughs> Maybe a little meatball recipe or something about Teddy. I, don't, I can't do it today. Just can't do it. I just don't have it. I'll play music. But I can't get off this topic too easily because these four young men are dead because of the policies of this administration. Make no mistake about it. This didn't happen in a vacuum. DHS failed us. The director of DHS should be fired today and replaced by a returning war veteran. Or a policeman from the streets of America who's faced these, these radical Muslims before in a shootout. Then you'd have someone who could protect us. Rudy Giuliani should be made head of the DHS if you take the job. I wonder who Donald Trump would appoint to the, the Department of Homeland Security. I guarantee you it wouldn't be Jay Johnson. I guarantee it wouldn't be a Wall Street lawyer I, who never fired a Daisy BB gun. No, I can guarantee that one. No, sorry, Bob. What would you do if you were given the job under a new administration of the Department of Homeland Security? What would the first thing you would do? Uh, do? I know what I would do. I would do what uh, Representative Peter King said. I would monitor every mosque in the United States of America with a permanent FBI presence. So you can't do that. It's racial profiling. Well, hey, it's either them or us at this point. Where are these terrorists coming from? Let's ask ourselves a common sense question that Obama apparently doesn't let anyone ask. Are they worshiping in? Now, there's four, four uh, choices below. Take a look at all of the domestic terrorism events with the exception of that punk white man who shot those poor black people in the church, which I railed against with great emotion. Tell me where 99% of the terrorists worshipped. One, a church. A, a church. B, a synagogue. C, a Buddhist temple. D, a Hindu temple. E, a mosque. F, in front of a Satan statue. And figure it out. And then go from there. And then you could do some police work to prevent the next attack. But that's, that's old-fashioned. That's Broderick Crawford's era of police work. That's a, I'm, I'm talking to you like a film noir character.
It is the Savage Nation. Yeah, it is government zero, isn't it? Would you say this government is a government that will protect you or can protect you? Anyone who says that is a fool. Boston Marathon bombing, where were they? Four dead Marines, where were they? Today they don't know why he did it, how he did it, who he was involved with. They don't know if he's a Muslim. They don't know why he did it, how he did it. Now they'll tell us he's just a lone wolf who had psychological problems. He had been picked on because of his race and religion, and he was somehow getting even with the Confederate flag. Eh, come on. This is government zero at its worst. At its worst. And there's the president with his lackluster statements yesterday. Oh, ho, hum. What, what is it now? For who? Who were killed? Where? What? Wait a minute. Uh, hold on, Valerie, just a minute now. Tell Zarif we'll get back to him in a minute. We have a little problem here. We'll get back to him with the the uh, Elid uh, celebration, the uh, the Skype celebration we're having all over the world. Hold on, what? Four Marines? Uh, what do they look like? Oh, really? Okay, I'll, I'll give a little speech. None of them look like Freddie Gray? No? All right, a little speech. Let's go to clip three. You'll hear your president at work. Here's his heartfelt message. Here it is, uh, clip three. Uh, my main message right now is obviously... Uh, the deepest sympathies of the American people yeah. to uh, the four Marines that have been killed. Uh, All right, you got is, through that one. All right, uh, go back to the L.I. The, the, the Skype celebration for the Muslim holiday. Go ahead. Go back on Skype with uh, with your team, your team of leftist progressive Islamists who just did a deal with Iran. Go ahead. Go back to your Skype celebration. Get out the pita. Get out the uh, hummus. Go ahead. Get out the rug. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. So four Marines are killed on, on our home soil. They were disarmed by Bill Clinton in 1993. All, all U.S. troops were for fear of a coup against the Islamists and the progressives who were already moving to destroy this country. And they knew that the only response that they could never, ever, ever fight effectively would be a military uh, one. And so they destroyed the military from within, disarmed the troops, and then Obama finished it off by decapitating the leadership in our military from top to bottom. From the captains above, they've been purged out of the military or resigned as a result of the war against real warriors in the military, which is why we're not winning the war against ISIS, because he's not fighting it, number one. And number two, if you took a look at the people he's put in charge, they would sound very much like the FBI agent who I played in the last hour, who went on in circles about they don't know the motive of the uh, shooter. Here's an interesting article from World Net Daily, Obama's pre-terror pre tweet, Happy Eid el Fitr. Obama sends out pro-Muslim message two hours before Chattanooga attack. And here's the article by Cheryl Chumley. President Obama, in what should emerge as a public relations disaster, sent out a tweet just two hours before the domestic terrorist attack in Chattanooga that left four East Marines dead. And the tweet said, in essence, Happy Eid al Fitr, all you Muslims in the world. His tweet from the White House account is reported by Breitbart, from my family to yours, EID Mubarak at POTUS, to Muslims celebrating Eid al Fitr. Obama, with his wife Michelle, also issued a statement about Eid al Fitr. Extending, quote, the warmest wishes to Muslims in the United States and around the world, close quote. And he wrote this. As Muslims mark the end of the month, they are reminded that Ramadan is a time to reflect spiritually, build communally, and aid those in need, the first couple said. The White House Twitter account showed, while Eid marks the end of Ramadan, it marks a new beginning for each individual, a reason to celebrate and express gratitude in this holiday. The Obamas also reminded of the importance of respecting all faiths. He said, they said, quote, as Muslim Americans celebrate Eid across America, the holiday is a reminder to every American of the importance of respecting those of all faiths and beliefs. That's a sort of threat to you and I. Quote, this past year, New York City public schools announced adding Eid to their official school calendars alongside Christmas, Hanukkah, and other holidays. An acknowledgement of the great diversity and inclusiveness that adds to the richness of our nation. Michelle and I hope today brings joy to all of your homes. Obama's official remarks about the shootings that killed four Marines and left a Marine, a sailor, a police officer critically injured, are they were committed at the hands of a lone gunman. As WND previously reported, 
Mohammed Yusuf Abdullah Zr was born in Kuwait and had a Jordanian citizenship that immigrated to America with his family and became a naturalized citizen. He was shot and killed by police. Obama, in a tweeted video in the minutes after the Chattanooga shooting, called the incident a, quote, heartbreaking circumstance. Notice the word circumstance. A emphasis on the word circumstance, meaning it happened by accident. And he asked Americans to pray for the families who are grief-stricken. And I want everybody to understand what we will be through. We will be thorough and prompt in figuring out exactly what happened. Well, Mr. President, we can save you millions of dollars. You can pick up the shell casings now and go home. You can send the, the, the FBI home now to their diversity training sessions. You can send the DHS agents back home for their diversity training sessions. You can pick up the shell casings and the yellow tape. We can tell you what the motivation was. If you'd like to listen, because we've been talking about it on talk radio for the last day, not only on this show, but every other show that has a host with the guts and the brains to have figured it out. Yeah, we figured it out, Mr. Obama. We know what the motivation was. In fact, most Americans with an IQ above 98 have figured out the motivation. You know why, Mr. Obama? Because it's not the first terrorist event that's occurred under your watch. I don't know how many to count them, how many blessings you give us. How many different ways can we, can we count the blessings of domestic acts of terror by practitioners of the religion of peace? Now, I recognize this is incendiary. I recognize this is a, a, an affront to the sensibilities of so many progressives. But perhaps it will shock the rest of us into the awareness that we are all in danger and that government zero will not and cannot protect us. In fact, the opposite is true. They will protect the guilty. They will protect the guilty at all costs. That's the danger we are in. So where do you want to go from here? Should the DHS chief be dismissed today? Yeah, sure. Sure. Should Ed Reinhold, the FBI special agent in charge, who gave that ludicrous, sophomoric uh, speech that we played for you, we're going to get to the bottom of it, we're investigating, we don't know why, we don't know how, we don't know who, we see the shell casings, a tragedy, we'll get to it, we'll find it, we'll be on the bottom of it, we'll be on the top of it, we'll be around it. But we'll never let you know exactly what, because move along, you'll forget it in two minutes, because there's another porn movie coming out from Harvey Weinstein any second. Uh, and with a little help from uh, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Wolf Blitzer, Bill Maher, and the others, you'll soon forget it. <laughs> and now, it's the transgender of the moment. You'll forget it by Sunday. There's a sports game coming up. Another transgender to be in a beauty parade and be heralded as a hero. No, these are the heroes, Mr. Obama. They're dead. They're heroes. Uh, those who mutilate themselves in the name of egotism are not heroes, my friend. But, okay, it's one man's opinion. I realize I'm in the minority. But since when did the minority become a crime? Since when did it become a crime to be in the minority of opinion in America? Since when has it become a crime to hold a minority opinion in America? Since when has it become a crime to express a minority opinion in America? Since when has it become a crime to say this is what I think it is to the rest of the world? Since when has that become a crime? Well, ever since the progressive maniacs took over America. The same people who lied to you about giving Iran the ability to build a nuclear weapon, they lied right to your face. They said robust inspections if they don't eliminate the uranium and the plutonium and the, the centrifuges, why? No, oh, they'll never get their money back that we're holding. No, never. Then yesterday, the stooge, Susan Rice, I could not believe that soundbite. She admitted that there would be no Americans on the inspection team. Instead, the inspectors will consist of fellow travelers with the Iranians. And there's no outcry the next day. Boehner can't be found. He's already on vacation. He heard of vacations coming up in August. He took an early break. He got out of town early. The gobbler went to the, to the turkey farm to get ready for Thanksgiving in Kentucky. He got the cold deal. That's all he wanted. That's all. He can go home now. Put on the overalls and the feet. Like, ah, 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 I don't know. He's in the turkey farm already. Fattening him up for the turkey slaughter in the Kentucky, the Kentucky Derby to feed them the turkey feed. There is no one home in the opposition. Zero. Oh, yeah, there's an occasional guy like the one I really like, Senator Cotton. But he's another minority. He's like Mr. Smith goes to Washington laughing at him. An actual returning military veteran treated like dirt by the vermin in the media. I'll use the word that doesn't offend as much, by the salenterates in the media. Because the word vermin has a, a certain connotation that offends liberals. The salenterates in the media, C-O-E-L. 
Enter it. Look it up. Uh, the uh, invertebrates. Let's put it to you that way. It makes it easier for you. The invertebrates in the media. That works. That's better. I would say that's more acceptable to the older folks who listen to the show who are offended by my blunt, plain talk. I'll use less offensive language, less offensive verbs, and then maybe we'll win the hearts and minds of the Islamists and their uh, liberal uh, friends. If we use less offensive language, I'm sure they'll put down their rusty knives and their AK-47s and their uh, pressure cooker bombs. If we're, less, if we're less offensive, they will put down their pressure cooker bombs and their rusty knives and their AK-47s. See, it's the offensive language that, that triggers them. It's not the fact that it's a thousand year war that's been waged for 1,000 years, only now it's on our home soil because of no opposition from government zero. Okay, I think I've said it in so many ways, and I think I've said it more eloquently than expected, and now I'll take some calls. I don't know where to begin. I have calls from all over the country. Oh, I know what I want to do. Wait a minute. I'm changing my mind. I was looking through my novel, Countdown to Mecca, for one passage, and I was going to say to you, we need organized crime to flush out the criminal terrorists waiting to strike us because the government can't do it. You know, in World War II, there's a very famous piece of history. A ship was bombed on the New York piers and sunk. And the U.S. government was at war, and they knew that they didn't have the ability to penetrate the labyrinth of the U.S., the New York waterfront. So they went to the mafia. I think they went to Lucky Luciano, and they made a deal with him. And they said, if you use your criminal friends and your criminal apparatus to flush out where the Nazis are hiding, we will give, we'll do a deal with you. We'll let uh, Luciano come back from Sicily. I believe that's how it worked out. So I was inspired by that, and I invented a character for my novel that everyone's writing about. So here he is, uh, Saul Minsky, a Jewish criminal this time, in Countdown to Mecca. Everyone's talking about it. So I want to read you one page, uh, pages 18 and 19 from Countdown to Mecca. So it's about Jack Hatfield, who has been banned by the media, and none of the other reporters will have anything to do with him. And I write this, none of the other reporters came over to chat with Jack Hatfield, even though he had saved San Francisco from destruction, associating with an accused Islamophobe or gay basher or climate change denier or any of the dozens of other politically charged landmines that crippled free speech in America was tantamount to professional destruction. However, one man did come over to talk to the journalist, someone who was an even bigger pariah. Standing between Jack Hatfield and the door toward which his quarry was headed was a short, powerfully built, wide-shouldered man he had thinning, swept-back gray hair, a broken nose, a jutting chin, no neck, and piercing gray eyes. His gray sport coat was bulging under the arm. It was Saul Minsky, one of the West Coast's most notorious and elusive mobsters. He wasn't just Teflon. This guy was porous. Criminal charges sailed through him and hit other people. Stooges he had carefully put in place, often without their knowledge. He approached Jack casually as the reporter headed from the meeting room of the Hyatt Hotel. Jack's manner became just as casual, but he couldn't contain a slight thin grin of bemused respect. Saul was a strange breed. Of all the big-time criminals he had t tracked over the years, Jack had never come across one who was as staunchly patriotic as Saul Minsky and less hypocritical. Saul did not pretend to be anything other than what he was, yet he also worked hard to make sure there was never collateral damage among the general public. He didn't deal in drugs, didn't deal in human trafficking, mostly shilled for corporate clients and their money laundering. That didn't merit a Nobel Prize, but he wasn't as bad as the Vietnamese, the Russians, and other local urban gangs. Mr. Jack Hatfield, said Saul, you just pissed all over one of my biggest clients. Jack closed the flap on his tablet and stopped to talk to the mobster. The businessman or the skunk? Ha, Saul laughed. I knew you were good even when you were investigating my operations back in the day. That's high praise coming from you, Jack acknowledged. This isn't our first rodeo, Truth Teller, Minsky reminded him. You know, I always respected you. Even when I got close to finding out what the cops never could, if Jack expected the mobster to react negatively, he was disappointed. The blockhouse of a man merely snorted. Especially when you got close, he said, his grin matching Jack's. When push comes to shove, you may find we disagree on less than you think. Minsky's hail fellow, well-met approach put Jack back on his guard. Acquaintances who were this chummy out of the gate bore watching. 
Jack intended his next words to put Saul in his place. So what does Herr Schoenberg run for you, Jack asked, glancing around to make sure no one was recording them. Guns? Oh, you're very good, Saul said, he shrugged. The big macha transports them on his planes. Let it not be said that we don't support freedom fighters in Syria, Kurdistan, and elsewhere. Jack grinned. No one's listening, but how do you know my recorder was off? Shaw shrugged. You got on or you don't do ambush. Jack, Jack acknowledged the compliment with a nod. What about those guys? He cocked his head toward the half, the hall full of journalists, a few of whom were eyeing Saul as though trying to figure out what he was doing here. <clears throat> Aren't you worried they'll try to pin your ears back? Those bloggers and hacks, they're here for the free food and ads. Anyway, I could be in Sacramento buying politicians before they're done posting anything on their impuissant little minds. Impuissant, Jack marveled. My, my, a thug with the vocabulary. It's called an education, Saul said. We're not all no-neck ignoramuses. Minsky was Israeli and Jewish. He spoke fluent Hebrew and Arabic. Having grown up in Bethlehem, his father and mother were slaughtered by Arabs in front of his eyes during Sabbath prayers in their little house. Saul was saved at the last minute by a special forces squad of IDF. He was taken to the United States to live with an aunt and uncle in Los Angeles, where he grew up. Rather than becoming just another vicious Jewish lawyer, Saul discovered early on he had a knack for something more dramatic. He liked to fight and kill if need be. He was very much the New Age version of an ancient Israelite. <laughs> Come on, it's fun. It's good writing, right, Robert? That's page 20. I like it, uh, of Countdown to Mecca. You could see why the New York Times refused to list it as a bestseller, even though it outsold, in the first week, outsold three best-selling uh, uh, thriller authors. Household names. My book outsold them, and the New York Times would not list the book in the top 15. That didn't make it to the news media, didn't make it to the Drudge Report. I thank my friends at WorldNet Daily for writing the story, which no one posted. Ted Cruz was able to overcome uh, that, uh, that act of tra treason against him. I was not, because I am simply one man alone, Michael Savage, champion for America's borders, language, and culture. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. All right, here we go again. New York City. New York City Muslims with machine guns stopped. You heard me. I'm sick of this garbage. Cops hunt for minivan transporting possible M16 rifles. Take a look at the pictures of them. She's wearing full garb. Police are looking for five people armed with what appear to be assault rifles after they were spotted by a retired NYPD cop in Staten Island Friday morning. The retired tipster snapped photos of four young men and women wearing a hijab, headscarf, in the Midland Beach parking lot near the boardwalk, transferring what looked like M16s between two vehicles, according to sources. The car's a silver minivan, and dark-colored ski-on have New Jersey plates. An internal memo was sent out to NYPD officers. Cops are on high alert after the massacre at four Marines in Tennessee. So there's a woman in a headscarf. We don't know her religion, though. We don't know her religion. We don't know her race. We don't know where she's from. We don't know her country of origin. There's no reason to rush to judgment. Ask the president what he thinks. Ask the head of Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, if you can find him. Look at his a New York Police Department detective, off-duty cop, uh, ca caught them with a camera transferring machine guns. Maybe the FBI can conduct an investigation that'll take six months and tell us there's nothing to see here. They're at war, you morons, you. They're at war, and Government Zero is on their side. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, 
Michael Savage. We have breaking news out of New York City. A day after four Marines were assassinated by a Muslim terrorist tied to ISIS, cops are looking for a minivan transporting possible M16 rifles with Muslims aboard. Police are looking for five people armed with what appear to be assault rifles after they were spotted by a retired NYPD cop, not DHS, not FBI, in Staten Island Friday morning, sources said. The retired tipster snapped pictures of four young men and a woman wearing a hijab headscarf in the Midland Beach parking lot near the boardwalk, transferring what looked like M16s between two vehicles. The cars, a silver minivan and dark-colored ski on, have New Jersey plates and bridge authorities have been notified to be on the lookout. An internal memo was also sent out to NYPD officers. Now, cops are now on a high alert following the massacre of four U.S. Marines in Tennessee Thursday by Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz. Law enforcement source said they're worried about the woman in the headscarf. She's carrying what appears to be an AK-47 assault rifle. NYPD is actively searching for these subjects and both vehicles. Extra cops have been stationed at the Staten Island Mall and Staten Island Ferry and military bases in the borough, cops said. Now listen to the punchline. The weapons could be either paintball guns or airsoft rifles, and police are checking local paintball facilities, sources added. Now, who would the sources be other than DHS or FBI? I want you to go to the New York Post. I want you to look at the picture if you're near a computer. I want you to see the doll in the headscarf holding the gun and take a look at the gun, blow it up. I've never seen a paintball gun with a full bore clip in it a 10 or 20 round clip in the bottom of it. Have you seen a paintball gun that looks like that? The woman with the hijab with the uh, M16 or the AK? That's a rifle, it's a machine gun. That's not a paintball gun. That's something that Government Zero would add as a punchline. That's something that Jay Johnson's stooges would tell the press. Oh, don't worry about it. Let's see now, the myopic DHS. Oh, uh, could be a paintball gun. Now let's go to the FBI. We'll investigate, but wait a minute. The woman with the uh, headscarf, well, uh, she's, uh, it could be a paintball gun. Don't rush to judgment now just because she's a Muslim. Don't be a racist now. Our booklets say, whenever in doubt, always erase it out. Whenever in doubt, erase it out. Any reference to religion or race, unless it's a Christian with a cross, is to be denuded immediately from any discussion or investigation because that's the government zero way. So what do you have to say about that? Two days in a row now? Nothing? Zero? Government zero? Population zero? Opposition zero? Jacob on WABC, what do you have to say on the Savage Nation? What was interesting about that clip you played about his response to the dead Marines is the total lack of empathy. Now, when you take into account as many statements that display his narcissism and as many statements that display his Machiavellian nature, you're the only one who figured out that these are the three main traits of the psychopathic personality, which they call now antisocial personality. I guess that's the PC term for it now. You wouldn't be discussing our president, would you? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 allegedly, I am, Michael. Yes, I am. Yeah, notice the lack of empathy in his discussion of the four dead Marines. Do you notice the tremendous empathy he had for the deaths of thugs uh, in the past? Freddie Gray in the back of a police van. That touched him deeply. It was totally harmless. Uh, under the guy who tried to take the gun away in uh, Ferguson before the city was wrecked by the thugs, the gangs. The guy who tried to shop, shoot the cop and fortunately was killed and shot dead in the street like the mad dog he was. That seemed to have touched him as well. Well, is it because the four, is it because if Obama had a son, none of them would look like the four dead Marines? Is, do you think that has anything to do with it? Well, my, my point is, is when you call him a psychopath, you just ain't whistling Dixie. You just nailed it on the head, as you always do. And, uh, you know, you have other callers. You that know, people don't want to accept that we could have a madman in the highest office. They don't want to accept it. And this is the, this is the astonishing part. What is a president but a man? So as a man, he can be anything. He can be wonderful. He can be crazy. He could be a genius. He could be a fool. He could be an enemy. He could be a friend. Why must we assign supernatural powers to a man, whether he be a judge, 
or a politician. I don't understand why they're not willing to even examine the possibility there's a madman crashing the good ship state into a mountaintop. Why will they not even analyze that? Liberalism is the most dogmatic religion on the planet next to Islam. So you agree with me that Government Zero is the coming together of progressives and Islamists in the most devastating force against our republic ever seen? Of course, sir. And look at what the New York Times, I prefer to call them New York Pravda, are doing to you. How they're trying to suppress you from just voicing your opinion. Of course it's Stalinesque. Right. The book beat three major mystery writers, and they wouldn't list the book in the top 15 when it came out the first week in Countdown to Mecca. It won three weeks in a row it should have been on the list. And when the publisher approached them, they said, well, oh, no, you did both purchases. They pulled the same crap on me that they did Ted Cruz, but he has more friends in the media than I do. He has uh, the Rush Cartel. He has Breitbart. He has the little yackers and talk radio who are on his side. I don't have anybody. But I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca, my friend. I like your voice. Certain voices I like. K-U-G-N, that's K-U-G-N, Oregon. Eugene, Oregon, a once wonderful city occupied by Americans until it was penetrated by escapees from San Francisco's liberalism who brought a more virulent form of it to Eugene, Oregon. Brian, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Thank you, sir. I was just describing Eugene that way yesterday to a, an out. A person who doesn't live here. Anyway, uh, Eugene, Oregon was once a ro a rock solid American city, and what happened in the '60s was a lot of the psychos from San Francisco penetrated Eugene, Oregon, and destroyed it. You you couldn't be more correct. That's exactly how I described. They it. did it to Portland. They did it to Eugene. They have hijacked the entire state. So, what's on your mind today? I just finished reading Countdown to Mecca, and I wanted to ask you, uh, excellent read, by the way, I wanted to ask you, I'm an author myself, have, do you purpose, do you know, have you consciously or subconsciously made Saul almost a mirror image of yourself? <laughs> oh, come on. No, I'm not a gangster. I've never been in the criminal world. Why would you say that? <laughs> the character that's closest to me is not in the book. Brutally honest, and he, and he... Or, or you, like him, really relishes crushing, killing, if you will, figuratively, your radio competition, because you do, and you relish it. <laughs> Look, you, you're a writer, so you know what fiction is. You take pieces of yourself, and you project them into whole persons, but they're not you. If Shakespeare invented characters that range from a king to a fool, would you say that the fool was Shakespeare or the king was Shakespeare? The answer is, he was not a king nor a fool. He was a writer. Exactly. It's hard to say. You can't paint him as one or the other. Right. But it takes a very strong personality to be a fiction writer who can project personalities without getting lost in them. You see, this is the problem for Hollywood actors like Sean Penn. He acts like a tough guy, waves guns around, bashes people's heads in, in the movies, and then talks against guns and knives off screen. Talks, uh, I never saw anything like the disconnect, the disassociation. But he's an example of weak-minded individuals who've risen to the top because of men like uh, Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, Spielberg, and uh, Weinstein. They take phonies like them who are so disassociated from reality that they think that they're the characters that they're playing in the movies. This is a challenge to all of us to not become the character we're playing in our novels or even on the radio. Many people think that they can act out anything they want in real life, but you'll find out that those in the radio business are often not what they sound like. You walk that, in your writing, you walk that fine line like probably no one I've ever read who is... <laughs> well, uh, what, what kind of books do you write? Uh, I, too, am a, a, a fiction writer of uh, short stories. Mm, it's not easy. Very hard to do. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Now, since we're talking about writing... Uh, I mean, we're going from terrorism to writing now. My favorite top, one of my favorite topics in an escape for me is this book, Government Zero, that's coming out in October will be my last big nonfiction political book. I won't do it. I'm also working on a book about my dog, which is going to be a, f a picture book. And the photographer's coming out next week for that. Would you believe it? Because I want to move away from it. And I have just finished typing or having typed for me. Something I've worked on for nine months, which is an experimental novel, 
that's a very short story where I do uh, things in it that I've never dared do before. And it's a very confusing book, but it's actually a work of art, much like a modern painting. And I think people will be shocked that I'm able to do it. I transition between genders, meaning the character does, in the book. I describe uh, situations between people that they would think I'm not capable of doing because they've typecast me. I, I'm, putting, I'm gonna put it out as a self-publication probably on the internet, however you do that, to show people the range of, uh, of this uh, right-winger, Michael Savage. Because I wanna break the stereotype. They like to categorize us in ways that we are not. They don't understand that we have full personalities. It's they who lack full personalities. So anyway, that's the story, my friend. So your red countdown to Mecca, I'll send you, I have, I think, four left to give away, and then it's over. It's now 16 minutes after the hour. KSFO, Kevin, have you looked at the pictures of the Muslims with guns in Staten Island? Are they paintball guns, as the FBI probably told the reporter? Kevin, did you look at the picture? Go ahead, please. Yeah, and I actually, uh, I play uh, soft air rifle uh, guns myself, and in most cases, uh, toy guns or soft air rifles have orange tips at the end to identify them as toys. Otherwise, right, and that wonderful woman with a hijab and a backpack seen strutting around the parking lot like she owns America, she is holding a machine gun, is she not? It, it appears to me to be a machine gun. If it was a toy, if it was an airsoft rifle, it's definitely not a paint gun, I'll tell you that right now. because paint So how could them. the reporter for the New York Post add a little tag that at the bottom, authorities, sources said the weapons could be paintball guns or airsoft rifles. How is that even possible? How could the FBI or, or DHS have the nerve to try to pull that on the reporter? Yeah, without a doubt, they are not paintball guns. They, they could be, they very well could be airsoft rifles, which almost look identical to the real guns, except in most cases, even airsoft rifles have to identify them as toys. They put an orange tip at the end in case they are in public somewhere using these things. Please see them, and they don't get shot. And that's what identifies them as toys. But in this case, I, I'm looking at the picture, and I do not see an orange tip at the end of these M16. So no, I but I see, I see a head scarf with a machine gun is what I see. Exactly what I see as well, Michael. And by the way, I'm looking at the minivan in the New York Post picture. I can read the license plate if you put a magnifying glass on it. Do you think that Jay Johnson has magnifying glasses at DHS? think that they would have the ability uh, do you think that they have a high-tech item like a magnifying glass to explode uh the size of the license plates so they could track it down or is that off limits because it's the end of ramadan and it might just have knishes in the back maybe she's delivering hot knishes to her friends yeah, look it's a laughing matter if you want to laugh at it until it comes home to you but if they were your sons dead in tennessee you wouldn't be laughing today if you were a member of the military, you wouldn't be laughing today. If you were one of the millions of members of the armed forces sitting like sitting ducks inside our military bases, you wouldn't be laughing today. You'd only be laughing if you were Wolf Blitzer or one of the morons in the media, one of the fools in the media who are putting us all at risk. And I don't know what it's going to take for this country to change. I do know what it's going to take. It's going to take the big one. It's going to take the big one. And I mark my words, if God forbid the big one comes like a dirty bomb or something horrible like that, you're going to wait and see what the media says. We provoked it. We shouldn't have been in Afghanistan. We're not sensitive to Muslims. What do we do to offend them? We have to reach out. That's the end of the road. There'll be a civil war. And by the way, it'll be overdue. That's the only thing that could save us. I prayed that we stop the coming civil war. But this government is pushing the people beyond, let's say beyond the beyond. Nobody can take this anymore. In plain sight, they are at war with us by enabling the enemies of our very survival to thrive while repressing those of us who can see with our open eyes what has been done with this infiltration of all the intelligence agencies and every avenue of the media, with rare exception. Boy, this is a heavy-duty day. Here's a call from New York about what's going on there. I'll get to him the minute I come back on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, the news that's coming out of New York is uh, interesting. Interesting, nothing, nothing to see there, nothing to get excited. A woman with a hijab with a machine gun 
walking around a parking lot uh, with some fat boys uh, in the van with her, also carrying what looked like machine guns. Nothing to worry about. Ask DHS, see if you can find Jay Johnson, see if he's around for the weekend. Or maybe the FBI can give a speech that it was really a paintball gun. Of course, if you look at the picture, the uh, woman with the hijab holding the machine gun in the parking lot, they're transferring them to a minivan. It has a full bore clip on the bottom. I've never seen a machine gun with a clip. Could be a rubber gun. I mean, it could be all racism. Muslims are Americans. They're allowed to have paintball guns. And uh, we, we shouldn't rush to judgment. It could be a, a, a rubber gun. I mean, that's why all the bridges on Staten Island are closed uh, uh, down. They're still looking for the armed men, the possibly armed men right now in New York. Bridges are closed. Chaos on Staten Island right now. Oh, yeah, looking at possible Fort Wadsworth and uh, four men, men, a day after Chattanooga, you hear? The above photos were sent to the Intelligence Bureau Operations Unit by a retired NYPD member of the service on today's date. The location of the photos are at the Midland Beach parking lot in Staten Island and depict unknown individuals armed with what appear to be assault rifles. The reporter indicated one may be a paintball gun. If these vehicles are observed, approach with extreme caution and contact Intelligence Bureau Operations immediately. The following are the license plates on the two vehicles, and New Jersey A83 FCB and New Jersey PSJ52V. Intelligence Bureau leads investigative unit, case number blank. And it comes from the NYPD Intelligence Bureau. The uh, Homeland Security Department is busy studying uh, diversity manuals, and the FBI has no comment. They have to consult first with Susan Rice, Valerie Jarrett, and the other members of Obama's uh, immediate surrounding Praetorian Guard of sorority members before they will utter a single word. Have a nice moment. Have a nice break. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. If you're... Cover the country has been infiltrated from within. DHS is being run by Jay Johnson, a fine man from a great family. By the way, I'm not saying that sarcastically. Unfortunately for us, he's a Wall Street lawyer who was inside the Defense Department when the rules of engagement made it impossible to fight and win a war. He's running DHS, was stared, stared at the reporter when they asked about Catherine Steinle in San Francisco, didn't know who she was. Not one word about why he missed the Boston Marathon bombing. Why DHS missed Chattanooga. And now today we have a lockdown in Staten Island, New York, just hours ago. New York Coast Guard bases were in lockdown over an armed woman in a hijab transferring what looked like a machine gun picked up by a retired NYPD detective. There she is in all her glory. Hijab, sunglasses, backpack, and some fat boys with her. I don't know who they are. They're in normal garb, meaning ugly American clothing, disgusting, idiotic costumes. They look like clowns in the Ringling Brothers Circus from my era, which passes for, a, for an outfit today, an undershirt and shorts, like the average American. Retired officer snapped this photo on Staten Island, July 17, 2015. Potential security threats causing traffic headaches on Staten Island Friday. It's a be on the, I haven't found the van now. They're going in for hours. The, the geniuses can't find the van. They have the license plate. The description, the machine guns, and they can't find them. Where are they? Paul, WMAC Radio, welcome to the Savage Nation. Mike, there's a reason why those four Marines were tragically assassinated. And the reason is because there is a Muslim equivalent of Michael Savage inciting Muslims to rage against America, just as you incite hatred against this president. There is a Muslim. Yes, sir, sir, you made a big statement. I don't know what you're saying. What are you talking about? I'm not allowed to have a minority opinion? You mean because I don't have your opinion, I'm not allowed to express it? Only you can talk your big mouth and shoot your big seltzer mouth off like Clarabelle? What do you mean? I can't express a minority opinion? You stupid idiot, you? There's no greater proof in the lack of repression than you have your own show. But there is a Muslim equivalent to you spouting the same hatred 24-7 like you do. Oh, so in other words, I'm the one who killed the Marines, you schmuck, you? Was elected by the American... You people. stupid lowlife, you! I'm the one who shot unarmed Marines, you You stupid little man, you! Idiot! I'm the one who disarmed... I'm the one who disarmed our military on bases, not Bill Clinton, you idiot! Alone. 
Just leave me alone, you liberal you. I can't stand it anymore. I can't take these liberals. They're going to kill us all. So and anyone who stands up to the Muslim assault on the West is now inciting a, a riot. Do you hear this? Do you understand what I mean by liberalism is a mental disorder? That they have more hatred for those of us who have the guts and, the, and, and the, the willingness and the strength to stand up to this assault upon us than they do against those actually doing the killing. Those doing the killing are their friends. Why do they have a natural sympathy for them? Why? They'll let you figure it out. It's not the Stockholm Syndrome, it's worse. And anyone who uh, criticizes the president in a rational manner is a hater. Yes, indeed. So New York is locked down because of me, not because of Muslims with machine guns now. Why don't you say that the whole New York Police Department is racist, sir? KCMO, Chris, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Thank you, Michael. I cannot tell you what an honor it is to speak to you. I've had a story I wanted to tell you, maybe brighten the sad day a little bit. I want to tell this to you for years. I went back when your book, The Political Zoo, came out, I was in the Detroit airport on a layover. I went in a bookstore and I found it and started looking through it. Each of the chapters on each of the people you profiled was short and, and, and beautifully written. And I just started reading it. And I got so engrossed in your book that I literally, Michael, I missed my flight. It was the last flight of the day. I got stranded in Detroit because of your talent. Oh, After my God. Well, I owe, you an, I owe you an airplane ticket, I guess. It was worth it. I, just, I, I, I guess I should be arrested for inciting humor. According to the last caller, I should be, I should be arrested for inciting uh, humor, using sarcasm and literary genius. Let me tell uh, you maybe the last caller would like to have my books burned, that great liberal. Maybe he would like to burn my books from Countdown to Mecca backwards. Maybe that would be a mark of progressivism. Maybe he'd like to burn Trickle Up Poverty and Stop the Coming Civil War. Maybe he'd like to burn liberalism as a mental disorder. I isn't that the liberal way? That is, but the beauty of your book is, if you go back and look at the chapters you wrote, the pages you wrote about each of the people you profiled, you were so dead on when you wrote it, and you look at it years later since that came out, it's still just as relevant today as it was when you wrote it the first back then. And that's when, that's when I lost uh, all of my friends in the conservative media, because I profiled Rush Limbaugh just as brutally. In fact, I profiled Trump. I'm afraid to open it and look at what I wrote. Uh, I profiled the, the, the Republicans as well as the Democrats in the political zoo. Uh, I think that's when I lost all friendships that may have been, let us say, even possible. I know that O'Reilly never would let me on Fox after that because I called him the leprechaun. He never forgave me, and that's why the queen of the May won't, won't have me on Fox. That's why Roger Ailes won't have me on Fox. Anyway, it's because, it's because of friends like you that I survive and thrive. Okay. WJR, Detroit. Keith, what's on your mind today? Go ahead, please. Hey, yeah, I, I got the station wrong. I told him something else. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I can't believe that uh, our commander-in-chief is going to trust Iran with uh, nuclear capabilities when, you know, he's, he, we're going to have a new round of gun control talks and say, well, common sense reforms and this and that and the other thing, all the rhetoric about, you know, people who shouldn't have guns getting guns. Guns with guns, is that what you're saying? Right. It's, 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 you know it. is, is, that, is that as simple as it gets? He right. trusts known terrorist sponsoring psychotics who run Iran with a nuclear weapon, but he won't trust Americans with guns. So that tells you where his sympathies lie. Well, I guess you now join the haters who don't like President Obama's policies. Be careful. The listeners are listening. They may report you to the DHS or the FBI. <laughs> They're probably tracking my phone now. Yeah, of course they are, because you're more dangerous than the Boston Marathon bombers and Abdullah Mahula Mahula Mazumala Azabab, who killed the, uh, the, the four Marines yesterday. They, he wasn't on their watch list. They were listening to talk radio to see the dangerous callers. That's it's a sad uh, state of events, isn't it? It's uh, very, really uh, Staten Island is the issue right now. Uh, let's see, what do we have to tell you? I mean, it's getting worse out there. 
Nothing to see here. Move along. Paintball gun. But wait a minute, sir. How could it be a paintball gun in that Muslim woman's hands? Well, we don't know she's a Muslim. Well, she's wearing a hijab. Yeah, but she could have a medical condition where she has to wear a headscarf. Why do you assume she's a Muslim woman? That's racist. But, sir, it's a hijab. No, sir, that is racist. If you go to the DHS or FBI manuals, you will see on page 393,422, section 4090 b that if you, if you see anyone with a headscarf, do not refer to them as a Muslim because it could be a medical condition that requires them to wear the headscarf. Do not rush to judgment. And if you see a woman with a headscarf carrying a machine gun in an uh, obscure parking lot near a beach, do not assume it's a machine gun. Immediately assume it's a paintball gun. That's, that's, uh, that's the intelligence agencies. Here's a report from Staten Island, Justin on WABC. What's going on? Is it still a mess out there? Oh, it's a total mess, Dr. Savage. I really think that, uh, that the, the woman in the hijab or whatever it is, I think they were planning something like, like what happened in Tunisia on the beach because that's a very popular beach on Staten Island, and that's the parking lot where it happened. And they're probably hot. Oh, no, no. I don't think it's that. It's probably just a paintball gun, according to the FBI. Probably hiding in a mosque. That's why they can't find them. With the, with, wait a minute. They can't find the van? How, how stupid can the, the police be? The, is a picture of the van with the license plate number. How could they not find it? They're either in somebody's house or hiding in a mosque because the NYPD. Yeah, but wait. But where's the car? They drove the car into a garage, you're saying? Possible. There's a mosque by, uh, by the ports uh, on, on the north shore of Staten Island where it happened. And they have a port right over there, so it's possible. Oh, and the NYPD under de Blasio is not, not allowed to go in a mosque anymore. Oh, yeah, that happened under Bloomberg. That's right, because you don't want to be racist. No. No, no, you don't want to be racist and follow the van into wherever it went. That, that's a, a, a no-no. And this is crazy. Look, we could talk about this all we want. It's going to take another event like 9-11, I'm sorry to tell you, for the country to, to rise up and, and throw these bugs off our back. Because we're all, we're all at risk right now. All of us are at risk. Now, the liberals would say that I'm inciting a riot and I'm inciting you and I'm yelling fire in a crowded theater. That's all rubbish. There are four dead men and they're dead because Bill Clinton disarmed our soldiers on military bases. And all of our intelligence agencies have been told to look the other way, no matter what a Muslim does in this country. Until after there's a body bag and even then they'll start apologizing for the act of terror. As they did today. They tell us they don't know why it happened, why he did it. They're investigating what it motivated him. What do you think motivated Mr. Abdullah Zabaziba Zabazir yesterday? What could have motivated him other than hatred for America and particularly white men? Incidentally, there's a racial element. The four Marines who were executed by this Muslim were all white men. Did you know that? Sitting ducks. All of them. Sitting ducks. And now we ask ourselves, why did Obama give such a tepid, lackluster response yesterday to the four Marines killed in Chattanooga. It's, it's disgusting to listen to this guy. When a thug dies in the back of a police van, he got all worked up he, into a sweat. The Marines died into a uh, message, pray for the families, nonsense. Oh, God, multiple trips to the Middle East and no one stopped him. And he had a, a blog where it was all full of um, uh, hatred, a, hate, a hateful blog. Muhammad Yusuf Abdulaziz. Brothers and sisters, don't be fooled by your desires. Life is short and bitter. Multiple trips to the Middle East. No motivation. All right, move along. We don't know the motivation. Could have had a bad day. Low fish oils. Low on vitamin B3. Low vitamins caused it. The diet was deficient in, in niacin. That's why he did it. That's all. Nothing to do with his uh, religion. Nothing to do with his race. Nothing to do with his background. It was a lack of vitamins that provoked him. New York Coast Guard base is on lockdown, alert of a photo of armed woman. Now it's a paintball gun. Look at the picture. It's just unbelievable. To look at the picture. I never saw a paintball gun with a, a, a full bore clip in it. We better consult with Diane Feinstein. She's an expert on clips for assault rifles. Maybe she can tell us if, it, if it's a paintball gun. Let me go and look at the picture again. I think it's up on my... Hey, cops hunt for minivan transporting possible M16 rifles. Police are looking for five people. And there's the doll with the hijab. I mean, the head scar. We can't say hijab because I say it may be a medical condition that uh, forced her. She could be an Italian woman with a medical condition forced to wear a headscarf. I mean, you, you can't rush to judgment on these things. 
Next uh, article on michaelsavage.com. Michael Savage court victory. Can you imagine a liberal Ninth Circuit of Court of Appeals ruled in my favor today, hours ago, against the original talk radio network? It's been five years and a million dollars for me to get victory in the courts. Five years. It shows you what the court system is, which is why people who use the legal system against others do so, knowing that you're ba basically afraid of them if they have more money than you because they'll bury you. But they picked the wrong one with me. I won in the arbitration court, then I won in the f circuit court, excuse me, the federal court with an Obama appointee, no less. A woman appointee by Obama in the federal court ruled in my favor. And quickly at that, now the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the most liberal court in America, ruled in my favor. It took me five years and a million dollars to get victory. And I have not collected one cent of the money that they owe me, which is a lot of money. And I need to get all of the video, audio tapes of my shows going back to the year 2000, which is called for in the agreement. Can you imagine what's ahead of me now? What fun I'm going to have now? The arbitration panel issued its award, terminating the agreement, awarding him over $800,000 in withheld compensation. Savage subsequently filed a motion to confirm the arbitration award, which the district court granted in May 2013. It went on and on and on and on. That's what the courts are. All you could say from a day like this with my example is that justice has prevailed and the legal system, as flawed as it is, has given me justice. Now I've got to collect and you'll see what that's going to be like. Go collect after you win a victory. Go see if you can collect a dime in this, in this legal system of ours. But you can read it anyway for your fun if you're interested in legal stuff. It's a five-page uh, finding. It's a very interesting one. Quite interesting. It summarizes it, but you go back and see. All I can say is the court did the right thing. The United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Michael Savage, Savage Productions, Inc., Plaintiff versus the original to a radio network, defendant appellant, number 13-16111, DC number 410, CV 05785, YGR memorandum and order. Appeal for the United States District Court for the Northern District of Columbia, Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers. All rise. Oh my God, the time is racing. I wish the show doesn't end. I'm in a sweat here in the seat from what's going on. I'm in a sweat from head to toe. Ask the guys. I changed my clothes three times in the last three hours. I ate a turkey leg. I did. Three times I changed my outfit from the sweat. I ate a turkey leg a size of a pterodactyl's foot. I found the market. I'm tired of the Chinese garbage and the Indian dreck. I found the market that sells cooked turkey legs for about $4.50. And it's so, it's so relaxing, the tryptophan. It's given me the energy to do, like, I, I, unlimited energy. I knocked off a turkey leg and a piece of bread and a Diet Coke. I could go for three more hours now. I think I found the, the fountain of youth. It's turkey legs. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Another fact about Abdulaziz, the subhuman who executed our four Marines. Abdulaziz earned an engineering degree from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga in 2012. Wait, here, here comes the puncher. And worked as an intern a few years ago at the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. That's the federally owned utility that operates power plants and dams across the South. Did you know that? They hired him for diversity. Well, they had no reason not to. I mean, he's an American citizen, earned his engineering degree. Why should they ban him from working at a power plant and a dam? Now, of course, if he blew up the power plant, I guess the DHS could say that they don't know the reason why, if it had been a power plant and flooded the entire uh, valley, killed a million people. I guess the uh, FBI could investigate whether there was any uh, reason for him do having done that. But let's not rush to judgment. Don't rush to judgment about any of this. Don't be a hater. Be a greater. 